So in this video, I'm going to share with you three behavioral patterns which probably should be avoided. They are kind of part of the human condition, let's say, but with a bit of conscious effort, we can mitigate their harmful effects. So let's get into it. Telling everyone too much too soon. As tempting as it is to tell everyone about your personal affairs, you know, what you're planning to work on next or um, some amazing, exciting idea you just had and what you hope to achieve. There's a lot to be said about moving in silence and letting your actions speak for themselves. You see, when you start revealing too much of your plans prematurely, the cat is out of the bag, so to speak, and the mystery is revealed. And with that, you lose a bit of that secret uh, source that keeps you motivated. You know, instead, you should consider conserving that essence, putting that energy into building a prototype first. That way, when you do reveal it to your family and friends, there will be something tangible, something worthy of consideration. Instead, a lot of people babble it all away before even writing their first line of code. And I'm sure you've met these people in your life. There's quite a few of them. Each and every time this scenario ends with an underwhelming response from the other party you're sharing the information with, and the babbler feels demotivated. And I know because, you know, I was that babbler at one point too. And it took me to make a conscious, focused, disciplined effort to stop it. You know, actions speak louder than words. We all know this. And there's a lot of talkers out there who never follow through. And I can't help but feel that if they stopped prematurely unveiling everything, that maybe they would have got further with their execution. And it's at these early reveals that the naysayers often love to appear on the scene, casting shade and um, doubt. But John, do you really think you should be spending this much time making a game? It's a bit risky, isn't it? Man, get the f*** out of here. You see, if you have something substantial enough to show at that first reveal, then it takes some of the fuel from the naysayers, you know. Your actions will be undeniable and you'll have too much momentum for them to try to stand in your way. I mean, they can try, but then you can just... And don't mistake any of this for feedback. Feedback is an important thing and part of the process and it should come at an appropriate time when you have done a certain amount of work. And you know, some people are on the complete opposite spectrum of this, where they just refuse to reveal any of their project ever. And they'll go all the way to launch without getting any feedback or testing done. And that's a problem too. And something I'll probably discuss in the future. So anyways, stop feeling the need to be congratulated for every single step you take. Do things for pride, not praise. And the praise will inevitably come your way. One of the ways I support this channel is by creating premium Unity assets for you guys to make and sell games with. They're a great starting point for different genres and I fully support them myself. It gives you guys a way to support the channel and get something tangible in return. So please do check them out, I'll leave a link down below. Getting caught up in the past is a common issue that the vast majority of people will run into. You know, rather than living in the moment, they will constantly ruminate on the past especially on mistakes we've made. And I mean, we all do this, right? I mean, to, to various degrees. Um, stupid things like what you said to someone five years ago, you know. The mind is a troubleshooting system. It's constantly trying to analyze and make sense of reality and our surroundings. And part of the way it does that is to look through the memory archives, trying to cross-reference things, comparing present to past. And it will often present you with redundant memories, often painful ones, or trivial ones even, that don't seem to have any real bearing on the current moment. And then we then relive those emotions over and over again. There was a neuroscientific study I read which determined that the body cannot tell the difference between an event, a real event, and the memory of that event in terms of a physiological response. Now, that's quite alarming, really, when you think about it, because it means that bad memories, which um, have the ability to cause chemical changes in our body and lead to stress, are being played over and over or again, potentially, if you let them, you know, which can lead to chronic stress and other serious debilitating issues. And to tie this into our craft of development, this negative feedback loop can seriously stunt productivity and the creative pursuit. Game dev is a bumpy road full of 
mistakes and mishaps. And we don't want to be haunted by every single mistake we made and let them define the present, you know, crippling us, leaving us in a state of choice paralysis, which is quite common in creative fields, where we are incapable of making a decision and moving forward out of fear of repeating the same mistakes. You are not who you were yesterday, so leave your baggage in the past and live in the present. I mean, it's the only real place to live, right? You know, the future and past are concepts in our head, both of which are framed in a subjective flavor. You know, mistakes are good. They are useful. Make enough of them and you will be left with the correct answer. So move forward decisively and confidently. The sooner you hit a dead end, a uh, mistake, then the sooner you can backpedal and make the correction and move ahead in the right direction. So next time you feel your mind wandering off into the past, ruminating on some old memories, just become aware of it. You don't have to try to turn it off. Just be aware of it and realize it for what it is. Just a, um, a troubleshooting system. Don't embody it. Don't let it um, have a physiological response in your body. That choice is completely up to you. Don't compare yourself to others. Now, this one is huge. There's no faster way to get demoralized than to be constantly comparing your journey to somebody else's. You know, comparing your game, your um, YouTube sub count, your Reddit upvotes or whatever. This is one of these, you know, inbuilt human condition situations. Because as humans, um, what we do is we make comparisons, right? So that we can better gauge our own position. Think of a ball moving through the vacuum of space with no other objects around it. There's no way to determine the velocity or trajectory of the ball. Only when other balls are brought in to the vicinity, then you can make the determination by comparing the balls against each other. And just so as indie developers, often we find ourselves comparing ourselves to others, others who are often further ahead on the path than us. And it can be quite counterproductive. And sometimes we do this with the hope of finding inspiration. And it can be useful in that regard. But like everything, it must be in moderation. If you are scrolling through game dev feeds on Reddit or Twitter, anything more than a few minutes a day, then you might just be wasting precious game dev time. You think these game developers who are making the games that you might be obsessing over are busy scrolling through their feeds all day? No, they're busy making games. You want to be that person who is posting the screenshots that other people can ogle at. You don't want to be the one doing the ogling. You know, there's a lot of good games out there that are in development, many of which are going to be better than yours. That's just the fact of it. And while there is value in keeping, you know, your finger on the pulse of the market, there is a healthy limit. You know, too much of this rubbernecking can really sour your process. And these people often end up as trolls or haters. You know, every now and then I'll get some dude coming by my YouTube comments, casting shade on my videos for no reason other than, you know, me making content. But I can only feel sorry for them, to be honest, because while I'm grinding away, making things, being creative, doing something positive, they are just obsessing over other people. So don't be that person. You know, it's a pretty sad state of affairs. And even if somebody has a similar game idea to you, it doesn't really matter. Just keep walking your own path. And though an idea might be similar in concept, the execution is always going to be different in some way. And there's no guarantees that those games will even be launched anyway. So don't let it deter you. Narrow your focus, knuckle down and stop paying attention to the background noise. Walk your own path on your own terms. That's the best way that you can probably live life. So that's it, guys. If you have some of your own motivation killers you'd love to share, please do so in the comments below. And please give the video a like if you did enjoy it and want to see more. And as always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who have been generously donating to keep this channel going. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. See you all in the next video. Good luck on your game dev adventures.